Hello, it's March 20th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. and this is a meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Uh, Madam Clerk, I don't believe we have any regrets this evening and uh, Council, are there any uh, declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Uh, would two of us move and second us into Committee of the Whole? Councillor Hazlitt Deal and Councillor Longo, thank you. Any objection? There being none, Madam Clerk, that carries. And we're now in the relaxed rules of the Committee of the Whole uh, for a planning session. Council, there's a consent item on our agenda tonight the Peppergate subdivision assumption. And may I have a motion? Councillor Adams, any objection? Councillor Adams, your motion carries. Uh, thank you very much. Council, the first of two discussion items is the recommendation report for a zoning bylaw amendment for the regional municipality of Halton at 1258 Rebecca Street. And this is a, uh, we, have a uh, we have an opportunity here to meet a new member of our planning department, Colin Westerhoff. And uh, he has a presentation on this file. Welcome, Mr. Westerhoff. We all look forward to working with you. If I may, Mr. Mayor, just want to introduce Colin to, to you and to Council. Uh, he's been with us now for uh, al almost a year, be a year in June. Uh, comes from a great planning pedigree as well, so we're really happy that he, uh, he joined our team and won't be the last time you see him, so let's turn it over to Colin. Thank you, Mr. Director. Great. Thank you and good evening, Mayor, Councillors, and members of the public following along at home. This evening, uh, we'll be providing a presentation on the overview of the recommendation report for the zoning bylaw amendment at 1258 Rebecca Street. Oh, that's not working. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Um, so the subject lands are bolded on the slide above. They're, they're just south of Rebecca Street, east of Woodside Drive, west of Sandwell Drive, and uh, immediately adjacent to Woodside Public Library. Can you hear me? No. No. <laughs> you want to try now? Can you hear? Can you hear me now? No. Sorry. Is there a button I have to press? Uh, IT up here? staff is coming. Oh, to my rescue. You're just way too far from the mic. Oh, so you need to perfect. Right into it, eh? Okay. We can try this to see if this is louder, but this is the best we got. Right. You just have to be closer. I'll, to your I'll yell. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So uh, restarting from here. So Mr. Westerhoff, I want to assure you that this was not an elaborate hazing joke <laughs> to welcome you. Appreciate that. Thank you for your patience. We're looking forward to your report. Well, all right, thank you. Um, so the lands are, are bolded on the slide above. They're just south of Rebecca Street, east of Woodside Drive, west of Sandwell, immediately adjacent to Woodside Public Library, the new Halton Region Paramedic Service Station number 15, and just north of Patricia Picknell Elementary School. Next slide. Uh, so this, this application, uh, the purpose of this application is twofold. Um, one, it is to rezone a portion of the lands from RL2-0 to RL2. Um, with specific provisions for the future development of single detached dwellings along Rebecca Street there in the northeast corner. And the second purpose is to rezone the remaining portion of the lands from RL2-0 to RL7 with specific provisions for the development of semi-detached dwellings to be used as an independent living community with supports. The independent living community would be subject to site plan control whereas the three future single detached dwellings along Rebecca Street would not be subject to site plan control. Since the statutory public meeting that was held on June 27th of 2022, the proposal has been gradually refined and improved through the standard review process. The general concept remains the same as to what was presented to council in June of last year. Uh, the, in, in livable Oakville, the lands are designated as low density residential. Um, the, the proposal conforms with all applicable official plan policies and no further amendment is necessary in this regard. So the proposed zoning bylaw amendment would rezone a portion of the property to the RL2 zone with special provisions and it's identified on the slide above as the red hatched area. 
The proposed zoning bylaw amendment would rezone a portion of the property to the RL7 zone with special provisions, and it's identified on the slide as the blue hatched area. The proposed amendment recognizes the site size design elements dealing with lot frontage, rear yard setbacks, dwelling separation distances, parking considerations, and restrictions on decks and or balconies in rear yards to ensure proposed setbacks and buffering with adjacent residential properties are maintained. So these are key considerations. So all written public comments received as of the date of the staff report, which is March 7th, were included in the report and commented upon by staff. Key considerations as part of the review and evaluation of the proposal were rooted in staff, public, and council comments that were received over the duration of the application. Council, staff, and members of the public identified the considerations that you see on screen. So some of the matters that would be addressed during the site plan control process are highlighted on this slide, and they include enhanced landscape and planting plans, tree preservation and protection plans, on-site parking, traffic circulations, pedestrian circulations, grading, drainage, servicing, and stormwater management controls, as well as overall site design and functionality. So this is a little layout of the, of the timeline, and, and we're there right in the middle at the uh, recommendation report meeting on March 20th. So should the application be approved, the next step for the Halton region will be to subdivide the lands in accordance with the Planning Act and submit a site plan application to coordinate the technical development review of the proposed independent living community to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning Services. So in conclusion, staff put forth the following recommendation as shown for council's consideration. However, I would draw your attention to the date on the first point is February 15th, 2023, whereas that date should read March 7th, 2023. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Westerhoff. There's a question from Councillor Duddock. Councillor Duddock. Thank you, through your worship. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I've had a question um, raised by a constituent who directly abuts the uh, property on Sandwell. And looking at the timeline, and I don't have any problems approving the application given the extensive public consultation, my only concern is through the site plan process, is there an opportunity to maybe um, working with the constituent has concerns, maybe not meeting all of them, but possibly addressing a few of them. How might we go about that? Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the individual can, can contact planning staff as, as through the site plan process. And depending on what those concerns are, we are likely able to address them. Um, yeah, any, any sort of further information, I would, I would need to know what specifically the concerns are. Thank you very much. I'll connect the two of you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dudek. Councillor Elder. Thank you very much. Through you, uh, Mayor Burton. Uh, with this application, the reason it is going to site plan is because it is more than 11, more than 10 dwelling units now. If it was 10 dwelling units, it would not go to site plan? I believe that, sorry, through you, Mayor, I believe that is correct. There are 14 dwelling units proposed for the independent living community, so they would be subject to site plan control. Okay, that's good to know because that's a, that's a new change, right? Since Bill 23 came into force? Yes, correct. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Is there a motion? Councillor Chisholm, are you giving us the indicated motion in the agenda? That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you. Council, is there any objection to Councillor Chisholm's motion? Madam Clerk, there being no objection, Councillor Chisholm's motion carries. Thank you, sir. That brings us to 7.2, the recommendation report for the draft plan of subdivision for Mankey's Lakeshore Woods at 193 Nautical Boulevard. We have a presentation from Paul Barrett, our senior planner, and we have a registered delegation from the applicant's uh, planner, I'm gonna assume, uh, should we have questions for them. Mr. Barrett, welcome. Council looks forward to your presentation. Thank you, Your Worship and members of council. This presentation will provide a summary of the staff recommendation report regarding a plan of subdivision application submitted by Menke's Lakeshore Woods, Inc., which can be found on item 7.2 of tonight's agenda. 
The subject property is located south of Nautical Boulevard between Allison Crescent and Inville Crescent. As detailed in the staff report, the subject property is a surplus school block. The draft plan of subdivision proposes 37 new lots for single detached dwellings fronting a new public road. Since the statutory public meeting was held on June 7th of last year, two changes have been made to the draft plan of subdivision. The first is the woodlot buffered block. That's block 40 on the bottom uh, right hand corner of the screen that was added to the draft plan of subdivision to implement the recommendations of the scoped environmental impact assessment. And the walkway block at the public meeting in June was between 11, between lots 11 and 12, and it was moved to between lots 14 and 15, again, as shown in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And the reason for that move was so it would connect with the existing pathway from Inville Crescent to Shell Park. And so there would be one access to the park. In terms of urban structure, the subject property is identified on schedule A1 as being within residential areas. Some growth and change may occur within residential areas, provided the character of the area is preserved and the overall urban structure of the town is upheld. The subject property is designated low density residential by Livable Oakville and zoned RL6 Special Provision 296. Livable Oakville provides for intensification of lands designated low density residential in accordance with section 1119 and other policies of the plan as detailed in the staff report. The objective for section 1119 of Livable is to maintain and protect the existing neighborhood character and specific criteria is provided and was assessed uh, in the staff report. For the reasons outlined in the staff report is staff's opinion that the draft plan of subdivision conforms to livable Oakville. In terms of the zoning bylaw, each lot proposed by the draft plan of subdivision complies with the lot frontage and area requirements of the RL6 zone. Accordingly, the draft plan of subdivision complies with the zoning bylaw. In terms of putting this into context, I'll highlight key parts of the technical review, uh, which is detailed in the staff report. Um, again, in terms of protecting the NHS, uh, a buffer block will be dedicated to the town to provide a 7.5 meter buffer from the existing uh, woodlot to the southeast. In terms of pedestrian connections, it was important to secure the continuation of the existing pedestrian network through this block, which was accomplished through extension of the pathway from Allison Crescent, as well as a connection to the existing pathway from Inville Crescent to Shell Park. The new public road will also have a public sidewalk on both sides, together with two travel lanes, on-street parking, as well as boulevard and uh, street tree plantings. Uh, number three was alignment of Street A. This was achieved by aligning the western leg of the new public road with Turning Leaf Road to the north. This effectively extends the existing street pattern of this area. In terms of urban design, uh, the urban design brief identifies corner dwellings, view terminus dwellings, and upgraded side yard elevation dwellings, which will be designed with special attention to the future massing, heights, openings, materials, and detailing. The whole subdivision will be subject to architectural control, whereby a control architect will be retained to implement the approved urban design brief. In terms of lot pattern and density, the size and frontage of the proposed lots comply with the bylaw, and the density proposed is 21.6 units per site hectare, which is below the maximum density of 29 units per site hectare permitted by Livable Oakville. The staff report addresses other matters in detail, such as servicing, fire protection, tree preservation, stormwater management, and the suitability of the lands for the intended use. In terms of the council resolution uh, from the June 2022 meeting, it's listed on the screen in terms of other matters uh, that were to be addressed by staff in the recommendation report. 
And this was addressed in a staff report in four ways. And that is landscaping plan and in terms of the interface between Shell Park and the proposed development. So the first way that this was addressed was through fencing. So there's currently a chain link fence located on the property boundary between the subject property and Shell Park. In accordance with the town's fence bylaw, the future homeowners will have an option to add a privacy wood fence, so board on board or similar, on the private side of the property line at their expense. Number two, the landscape buffer between the proposed plan of subdivision and Shell Park. So the existing landscaping in that area is comprised of trees planted within Shell Park along the boundary of the subject property as illustrated um, on this excerpt of the tree preservation plan. As part of the conditions of draft plan approval, grading will be coordinated with the tree preservation plan so that the subdivision, subdivision is designed to maximize tree preservation and maintain the existing trees uh, within Shell Park. Uh, number three, in terms of the pathway, uh, similarly, the pathway will be designed uh, to maximize tree preservation where it connects with the existing pathway from Inville Crescent. And finally, in terms of warning clauses, staff are recommending that the listed notification uh, be included in all offers of purchase and sale and included in the town subdivision agreement, which would be registered on title of all of these properties. In terms of public comments, uh, the concerns are listed on this slide and staff have addressed all public comments uh, received as of the date of uh, the staff report uh, within the staff report and it's detailed uh, uh, in there as well. So in conclusion, staff is satisfied that the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms with all applicable provincial plans, conforms to the region of Halton official plan and livable Oakville plan, has regard for matters of provincial interest and represents good planning. Staff recommend approval of this draft plan of subdivision as the requirements listed on the slide have been satisfied. In conclusion, your worship, staff put forth the following recommendation as shown for council's consideration. Thank you. Mr. Barrett, thank you very much for your presentation. Councillor O'Meara, would you like to start the questions? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship, and thank you to staff for the diligent work with regards to, in particular, the, the buffer between the sports field and the, and the houses. Can, can you just clarify to me where, on page 112, it says staff are recommending that the following notifications be included. So has the applicant or has the developer agreed to that recommendation or is that just something that you're recommending but there's no, do we have any binding authority to put that onto title or what, what's the legal nuance that we're talking here with regards to that? Through you, your worship, as part of appendix A, which is appended to the staff report, there's a list of conditions and clauses um, that are recommended to be included uh, in the subdivision agreement. So should council approve the staff recommendation, that clause and the other clauses listed in appendix A will be included in the subdivision agreement and registered on title. Perfect, thank you so much for that. And uh, your worship, after council's had it go at it, I'd be happy to move the recommendation. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor O'Meara. Councillor Chisholm. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. A question, Paul. Um, thank you very much for the, the report. It's well detailed, and I know it's been an extensive uh, report, always when you're in adjacent to uh, um, public uh, um, homes and so forth, uh, private homes. And the issue we've had in the past is that when we institute lighting uh, on these fields, it becomes a creates a real major problem. So with this additional um, subdivision, does that preclude us from ever putting lights on that field? Uh, through your worship, this plan of subdivision, it, it would essentially continue the pattern of development uh, within the uh, adjacent area. Um, so whether it would preclude the town from installing lighting, I know there is not lighting on the two soccer fields to the uh, immediate south of the proposed plan of subdivision today. Um, that would, would need to be looked at uh, as part of a proposal to, to include lighting. 
I guess where I'm coming from is that we've had challenges, and, and I, I see that uh, Mr. Mark is here in, in history. Every time um, we have new uh, uh, sports facilities or, or fields and so forth uh, built first, and, the, and then the residents build around it, we, we uh, have concerns about lights and noise and so forth. My issue is this, does this stop us from putting lights on the field if we need to down the line? Are we, or is it off the, off the uh, record we can't do it? Why don't we call Mr. Mark <laughs> to the microphone? And uh, Mr. Mark, maybe you could uh, uh, let us know if, uh, if you'd like to install those lights before they build this thing. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor Burton. Uh, to, to you, Mayor Burton, there is no plans at this time to install any lighting <clears throat> on those two fields at Shell Park. Um, we did look at that a few years back, but we did determine, discover that the woodlot adjacent to Shell Park is a significant migratory bird uh, stopover. And um, I would suggest that any notion of lighting those fields would likely have to wait until the, the woodlot at, um, at the former Palm Place woodlot would have to grow to a significant maturity to the point that that would then become it was originally a stopover for migrant birds. It shifted to Shell Park when that woodlot was removed. So I would suggest to council that lighting of those fields, while we could do it, um, would be uh, into the future. Thank you. Well, let's hear it for the birds, eh? <laughs> Councilor Elgar, your turn. Yeah, just to confirm with staff through you, Mayor Burton. So it looks like the development is in line with the development on either side of this proposed development, the, the zoning, the number of units per hectare? Through you, Your Worship, that's correct. It's the same zoning uh, within the surrounding area. Um, they've tried to match up lot lines uh, with comparable lot areas and frontages. Yeah, I know it's what one side is eight and the other side is nine, so it's close when they're based on, because one, the other one, from the other subdivision on the east side, it's only eight lots, so that's pretty close. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, I'm happy to accept Councillor O'Meara's motion to approve the recommendation by staff. Is there any objection? Councillor Elgar? No, I just wanted to present a delegation. There's a delegation, if you had questions for them, from the planner for the proposer. There's still no objection to the vote. I declare it carried. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Meara. Uh, We now have a really important decision to make. We need someone to move that we rise and report. Councillor Lischina, thank you. Any objection? There being no objection, that carries. And uh, I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent items 4.1 and discussion items 7.1 and 7.2 as noted by the clerk. Is there a mover and a seconder to adopt the report? Councillor Grant and uh, Councillor McNeese, thank you. Uh, any objection? There being no objection, that's carried. Uh, Council, does anyone have new business of an emergency, congratulatory, or condolence nature? I, I would certainly take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Councillor O'Meara on his return to us. And uh, I hope that uh, no more adventures of that sort lie in your path. Uh, we like having you around, so take care. Anyone else? All right, Council, then we need a mover and seconder for the reading of the bylaws. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Nanda, thank you. Any objection? There being none, the bylaws are uh, read, considered, and passed. And uh, that ends the work of this meeting. Thank you very much for your time and attention. It's been terrific working with you.